I don't know if any of you are speakers or have ever had to give a speech, but for me, when I'm when I somebody when uh, Bob approached me and said, "Would you like to be our speaker in December?" and it's the minute you say yes for me, or I found in my experience, the minute I say yes is when the lessons start. <laughs> so about, I said yes, and I went, and I thought that the topic was celebrate what's right in the world. Because if you look in the world right now, you can, I'm gonna say a bad word, you can find some pretty shitty things going on. And to me, that actually excites me. And I'll get to a book why. But for now, Bob invited me, and then I get a phone call from Bob. Neil. I need you to put your big boy pants on. <laughs> and he says, would it be okay if you didn't do your talk and we substituted you with, with Hanor? And I'm like, cool, I love Hanor. Yeah, why would I not? <laughs> and it's like, okay. And then so Hanor was supposed to be here today. So I have really big shoes to fill because the energetically she was to be here today. And then, a couple days later, a week later, Bob goes, so, Neil, are you available to, to speak on your original date? And it was like, yes. And he says, because Hannah had some things come up in her life and she's unable to, to be here. And I'm like, I would love to still do the talk. And then I'm going, but is it still celebrating what's right in the world? Because I'm going, Hmm. I was supposed to talk, I'm not supposed to talk. What's the lessons for me? It's always, it's always about me. This is where I get to be selfish. The lessons aren't for you. The lessons <laughs> aren't when I'm speaking here. The lessons are for me. To heck with you. You <laughs> have the benefit of it. Because it's about me. What am I going to learn? And I'm learning that it's just to go in the flow. Acceptance. And it's where I want to be in my life. I'll talk a little bit about David Hawkins' energetic frequency a little later, but I, as a bare minimum, want to be in acceptance. I don't want to be in grief. I don't want to be in the lower frequencies. I want to be in as acceptance. So it was like, cool. This was the first step of who, of this journey. And I was, I was all right with that. So it's the world. We live in a dualistic world. Right, wrong, up, down, good, bad, evil, light, darkness. We live in a dualistic world. And as long as you were in this universe, you were in a dualistic world. That's just the way it is. And the scary part is, and the hard part, when you really think about it, you really think and accept and not just go, oh yeah, if you really accept that we are in a dualistic world, good can never exist without what we put as bad. We can never have one without the other. They are completely complementary, completely in a dualistic world. You will never, because the universe balances, its, its entire purpose is to balance. It will always be. Do you remember the, the magnets we had in school? That the north repelled the north pole? And, the, and it was love the south pole? Electricity is the same. Positive energy repels positive energy. Negative, and it's attracted. So when you, somebody says to you, I love your energy. And you say to someone, I just love your energy. Pay attention. Because you are attracted to what you need in that moment. It's not a necessary statement of who you are. It's not the way you exist in the world. But in that moment, it is what it's, you are attracted to. So if you find somebody that you love their energy, it's because temporarily and in the moment, it's, it's not fully operational to who you are. 
And there's no, nothing wrong with that. It's just a recognition. It's that's what you're being drawn to. And I would sooner be drawn to the love and the happiness than the poop show that's out there in the world that can be going on. So if I'm going to choose, and I believe my life is from a place of choice, I'm going to choose to be attractive. I'm going to choose to put myself into places that are good. September 9th, 2001. Some say it was a horrific tragedy, and it was. The balance to that was the greatest outpouring that North America had seen in years. The universe needs balance. The war in the Ukraine is horrific. But from that horror gives us this community a place of joy to support. And I am not saying that COVID has been a horrific thing. But it has been a beautiful thing. It has taught us love and compassion. And I choose to live my life from a place of love and compassion. You very, like I, you will notice I very rarely got involved in some of those conversations because it's a personal choice. Because the, whatever you, what, where intention goes is when it comes into my life. I don't want that in my life. So I'm just gonna ask you, close your eyes for a second. Give yourself a number, scale of one to 10. How are you feeling mentally? How are you feeling physically? How are you feeling connected to this community? You most, most of you know this, and I'm just going to ask you to join in. that 
it either attracts people to us or repels people. So if we want to grow as a community and truly celebrate our gifts, I ask you to raise your vibration and be in that position of love. So this is David Hawking's work, and he's measured various intensities and feeling and sensation. And fear vibrates at such a low frequency. And as I said, I want to vibrate. My personal choice is acceptance. I'm smart enough to know, and I've let my ego go enough to know that I want to desire to be love. But my humanness gets in the way. So I'm not always in love. I'm all, not always vibrating at the frequency of love. But darn it, I can vibrate at acceptance. I can be acceptance, and I can accept what is going on in the world, whether I like it or not. Because when I know that there's duality, it's an easier thing to accept that there needs to be things that occur in the world that I'm not happy with, that I don't think are fair and just for me to be that light. If you want to raise or be part, I mean, in build yourself up, change your frequency, and be involved in a community. Physics, when we were only, your voice was very quiet. But as a community, the laws of physics combined and made the whole thing louder. Built it up. Build it so we together as a collective, our voices combined, were loud. Light is the same thing. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of waters, and God said, and let there be light, and there was light. When you look at the world, darkness was first, and then we were created to be light. We, you, this is now about you, our creators of the light. You are the torch bearers of the light. So you can, do you take a little tiny little candle? It's still light. If you light all of these candles, it's still light and it's more. So each of us has a little candle and we can build it. When we resonate in love, our light is bigger. What are some of the spiritual definitions of light? Light is the one of the most universal and fundamental symbols. It is a spiritual and the divine. It is illumination and it is associated with intelligence. It is associated with holiness, goodness, knowledge, wisdom, grace, hope, and God's revelation cosmic energy, creative force, and optimism are all related to light. So we, as humans, can be instruments of light or dark. It's entirely up to you. We're put on this planet to be people of choice. It is a choice in every moment. Do you choose love, or do you choose the poop side? <laughs> I choose love. 
I choose love. And when you, there's a, a law, there's, there's a concept in psychology called the, the beta minor phenomenon, also known as the frequency illusion, where once you purchase a new car, you start seeing it everywhere. The idea is that, the, that it's like an attention uh, awakening. So when you choose love, you can't help but choose and see love. It is everywhere. One of the favorite things I like to do at this time of year is I like to go and see a poop show called Sh Christmas Shopping. I like to go to the mall and see. Because it's abundant. People that love each other are walking down the mall and they're like, and then, because they're stressed because of shopping. And then you see, in amongst all of that horror, somebody so excited that they have bought in their mind the perfect gift. And you can just, like, I can get emotional because you know they have put so much love and thought into this gift that it is perfect. And it's, to me, it's especially apparent in little kids. When they're buying the first present for mom or dad, or they, a young love that's their first Christmas together. And it's just, it's, to me, it's beautiful and magical. In 2006, in 2004, on December 26th, there was a tsunami. And my brother-in-law's family, who was from Sri Lanka, was directly affected. In August of 2006, so a year and a half after the tsunami, I went to help rebuild. And it changed who I was. A man and a wife and three children had the tsunami kit. She was unable to process the loss of her children. She was entirely catonic. Husband could say to her, sweep the floors, and leave her in the morning, and she would be still sweeping the floor when she came home. She would have been eaten. My brother-in-law, psychiatric nurse, we were working with these people. The husband had, in a year and a half, not been able to grieve his children and the loss of his wife. We went to his home. He made $2 a day, and he invited us for tea. There was 10 of us. He bought a package of cookies, which were four and a half dollars to feed us love because he knew we were coming to help him he spent two and a half two and a quarter days salary and my brother went for a walk with him and it was the most horrific sound I've ever heard for a man to feel grief and to be allowed to I was so freaking proud of my brother-in-law that he was able to be able to provide the opposite to that, the love and support to this man. Food is going to happen in the world. Food happens in the world. It is up to us the light. And it's when it is the darkest is when we need to be our brightest. And sometimes it only starts with a little spark. And then we allow it to go to be bigger. But in the darkness, it doesn't matter how big your candle burns. Because as soon as there's light, the instant there's a light, there is light. And that's the lesson. It doesn't matter how big.
big. You don't have to be massively flamboyant. You just need to carry your light and be that light. And it removes darkness. As soon as you are the light, there is no darkness. Zero. Darkness only exists when there's no light. So I encourage you. Whatever occurs, if you still find, still need to feel the need to be involved in causes, join the cause from a place of love. Carry the love. Don't allow yourself to get into the fear and the grief. Be the love. Whatever shows up. Years ago, God gave me a saying. I ran a program called The Spiritual Warrior. <coughs> and God gave me a saying. It only takes the light of one person to lead us out of the darkness. 